Hey, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. We've got a big harvest of tomatoes, so I'm gonna do a garden to table. We're gonna make a tomato soup, a real simple one, one that's delicious. Let's go. As you can see, I've got plenty of ripe tomatoes, tons of them. And most of these were picked while they had just blushed where they just start to show some color from the green. Some of them were picked earlier, like this guy here, uh, I mean uh, later, when they were colored, but you can see they're all nice and ripe now. Tomatoes will ripen for you on your countertop. Like these are all huge, juicy tomatoes. So we're gonna take advantage of this mass of tomatoes and we're gonna make some tomato soup that is uh, very simple, it takes a little bit of time, but you can make this with what you probably have in your kitchen right now. Okay, what we need for this recipe is enough chopped tomatoes to fill up a big pot like this, maybe halfway. And onions, I'm going to use these yellow onions that I grew. We want to add these onions in with the tomatoes as well. And we're going to cook these. We're going to stew these tomatoes and onions in their own juices for about 45 minutes until everything's nice and soft. So let me get to chopping. Now, with this recipe, I'll put the recipe in the comment section or in the info section. Uh, this recipe is kind of cooking by heart, cooking by feel. I can't tell you how much onion to put in there. It's that much onion. So three small onions to however many tomatoes you have. It's all up to you. If you want a more oniony flavor, put more in. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. So let's get to chopping. Now I've been doing more cooking videos lately because there's not a lot going on in the garden and well I like to cook and some one of you said that you like my cooking videos but I have terrible knife skills well I wasn't trained as a chef so you'll just have to put up with my knife skills but <clears throat> if I have terrible knife, knife skills let me know what I'm doing wrong so I can get better at it don't just say I got bad knife skills give me something to go with all right some of these tomatoes are imperfect. You can see that we've got some splitting and cracking up here. We have had inconsistent weather, so I'm just going to cut that part off of the, these tomatoes. And you can see that this one has a little bit of a green pith in there. I'm not really eager to use that, so what, what I'm going to do is just cut the prime parts of these imperfect tomatoes away and use that prime part. So basically the outside. Look at that. That's what we want. And you just want to cut it up into chunks. Obviously, the smaller the chunk, the more quickly it will cook down. Yeah, that's a, that's a good looking tomato. That's got a little much pith in there, so I'm going to set that aside. So just chop them up in chunks and put them in your pot. These are nice and juicy. They'll render down quite nicely. Don't worry about the skins. If you've got blemishes on the skin, that doesn't matter because we're going to filter out the, the skin. Also, I want your onions in there too. So let's get our onions over here. I'm just going to chop them just like that, crudely, coarsely. They'll soften up. But we're just going to go in and cut off the green parts of these tomatoes that and work around that pith because I don't like that pith. These are actually Cherokee purples. Very good tomato, one of my favorites. And they tend, sometimes, some years, they tend to stay green at the top on the shoulders. And I don't know why. I think it might be a strain, you know, this strain over some other strain. Because even though within, within a variety, within a cultivar like Cherokee purple, or mortgage lifter, or um, brandywine. You even you have varieties even within the cultivar. For example, brandywine. You've got different colors, different strains. It's almost th like a sub cultivar. You've got Suddeth's strain, which is considered to be the original, and then you've got everything else. Again, I'm taking these white pits out because I don't like them. And you'll find that to be fairly common in a tomato that 
ripened on your countertop is it it's a little inconsistent sometimes all right this one has some blemish on here a little bit of dirt so we're just going to slice that off put it in our discard pile work around that core now for the tastiest soup use the squishiest ripest tomatoes you have like this guy right here this guy is nice and soft and lots and lots of juice in there. There's what we've got. So we've got our crock pot filled up about halfway, maybe a little over half. And we're just going to put this on uh, medium high heat and start cooking and stirring occasionally. We're going to start heating this up. We're going to stew these tomatoes and onions together. We're going to add some spices and I'll show you what we're going to put in there. You'll want to give a good, generous dose of olive oil in here to keep this from sticking to your, your uh, pot. And keep it going, keep it turning so you heat it evenly and nothing burns to the bottom. We don't want anything to burn to the bottom. We want all these onions to separate. We want the juices to render out. And for this, these tomatoes to get stewed down so they're so soft we can shove them through a sieve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some salt. That will also help for rendering the fluids out. The salt will help draw the liquids out of the vegetables. So I'm going to add a couple of pinches. I like to use sea salt. Not too much. We don't want a whole lot of salt in this, so just a little bit. You can salt it later. I want to put some black pepper in there as well. I want to put some garlic in there. I want to put some Italian seasoning in there, and you can customize this soup uh, all you want. Um, but first, we're interested in rendering down this liquid. I'm going to add about three garlic cloves, maybe two and a half. It's up to you. We're going to put it in there and let that infuse. You don't want to go too much garlic with this dish. It's the tomatoes that are the main attraction here. So you can see we've got a lot of liquid already rendering out, a whole lot of liquid. So we don't really stand a, a chance here of burning our tomatoes so much as now we're stewing them in their own juices. Be sure to stir frequently. Look at the bubbles. We're going to add some Italian seasoning. About that much. <laughs> that was a bit of a dash, wasn't it? What I'm also going to add is something that I really enjoy. I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper, just a, a little bit. I'd say that's about a fourth of a teaspoon, just to give it a little bit of a heat. You don't have to do that, but I like it. Let's give it a stir. There's another thing you could add to a dish like this, and that is roasted peppers. If you had some bell peppers or some Anaheim's or I've got some gypsy peppers that are just like bell peppers, only a little bit sweeter. I could have roasted those and put them in here. But you know, I like this dish just the way it is. Now, if you have some fresh basil, that is a wonderful, uh, a wonderful addition to this soup. The last time I made it, I'd ha I, I slivered up some fresh basil and put it in there. But I found that ba the strips of basil really distracted me when I ate it. I didn't like the texture in the soup, so I'm going to leave that out this time. But if you like basil, Put some basil in there, um, otherwise do what I'm about to do and I'm going to put some basil flakes in there, there, some dry basil flakes in addition to that Italian seasoning. And that will get us that, that kind of licorice basil background scent that makes tomato soup so good. What we're looking for is the onions to be completely transparent and the chunks of tomato able to be pressed up against the wall of the pot and they just, they just basically squish into mush. We're almost there, another 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know, some of these that have the pith in them are a little bit hard still. So we'll, we'll just let it keep going. You can see how far down we've reduced our liquid from here to the level of the liquid. I'm gonna add some chicken stock. Hold on, let me shake it up first. Get all the goodness mixed up. I'm gonna add about, oh, that much chicken stock. What was that, about a cup and a half? And what that's gonna do as it continues to cook, the water 
all the steam that's coming out of here is just the water. It's leaving behind all the goodness that's in the stock itself, the, uh, the actual, you know, essence of chicken. It's leaving behind all the essence of tomato while it's reducing. So all you're taking out is water. So we can put that stock in at any time. That'll add another fa flavor profile to our soup, make it that much more savory. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at this. I want to show you this. We have reduced our tomatoes down to where they have basically broken up. Only some of the more stubborn pieces like that right there that had a little bit of that, that core in there, but they're soft enough where we'll be able to mash them into, the, into our, our colander or our strainer. So you can see the onions are completely transparent. This is a little bit thick. It's about where we want it. Now we're going to work this through our strainer here. Here comes the magic step. Now you can use a food mill or you can use a fine meshed strainer like this one. And all we're going to do is put it over a second pot and we're going to ladle our mixture our soup into here and then we're going to kind of mash on it and press it through this strainer and what that will do is make some of the more thick tomato pulp press through I like to use a silicone spatula here and this will cause this tomato pulp to get drier and drier until finally you can just discard it and see what we're we're keeping out of our soup is all these seeds and all the large chunks and all the skins. Yet we still have the essence of the onion, and the garlic. In fact, you can see some of that garlic gets mashed on through there. And then when you're satisfied that you've got enough of your soup strained out, you discard this for your compost pile and repeat until you've strained it all. All right, that's our first batch. Let's get some more in there. Again, you could, if you wanted to, take an immersion blender to this and just blend to your heart's content. But I find that that grind, it grinds up those seeds and the seeds are a little bit bitter. And so by taking the seeds out like this, we're, we're just getting a pure, a more pure soup. I guess you could use your your dipper. Just work it and mash those tomatoes. Push that pulp through. <clears throat> and then our last step will be a wonderful step of adding a little bit of cream. You don't have to add cream, but it just gives it that extra level. There's so many different ways you can use them, but this is one of my favorite. Okay, that's getting pretty dry in there. I'm gonna discard this. And that's a good amount of soup right now, and we're not done. There we go. Okay, so what we're aiming for at the end is to have very little tomato pulp left and just tomato skins and seeds and I think we're just about there here's what we're left with a beautiful soup now you could eat it like this in fact let's taste it and make sure that we have all the salt and pepper in there that we need oh yeah that's good it doesn't need anything else except the final step, which is a dash of cream. And it's up to you how much you use. That's how much I'm going to use. And you see it brings it up to this beautiful light orange color. Friends, it's time to eat. Okay, I can't really tilt it to show you without spilling it. But there it is. There's our soup. Yeah, let's give it a try. I can tell you already, it's going to be delicious. This is everything you want when you plant those first tomato seeds in late January, early February. This is what I'm after. 
I can't believe that it's so good. It's better than anything you'll get at the store in a restaurant. Our own tomatoes grown in our own soil, cooked by heart in our kitchen. That's what gardening to me is all about. And what makes it so good is the very fact that these are tomatoes that are not bred for the grocery store because those tomatoes are bred, they're hybridized to store well, to sit on a shelf a long time, to have uniform size and to appeal to the eye. But the tomatoes we can grow in our garden, all these different varieties, we can grow the tomatoes that we want to grow that are grown for taste and flavor um, and, and just scrumptiousness. There's, there's nothing better. This is a medley of Cherokee purple and a couple of other beefsteak sized tomatoes. You could add any kind of tomato in here. The last batch I used, I used cherry tomatoes uh, as well. So you can use any tomato in this and you can blend them together, mix them together. You can customize this recipe. You can add peppers to it. You could uh, add carrots to it. There's a lot of things you could do to customize this and make it your own. But that's, that's the recipe that I like, a basic, wonderful tomato soup that is just like summertime. That's, that's all I can describe it. It's summertime. Mm. Hey, I want to give you a little update about the channel. Um, if you're here watching this, you probably are looking for a cooking video and you found me through a search. Uh, but I'm a gardening channel. And all of my gardening followers, thank you for watching my videos. We haven't been doing many gardening videos. Um, it's just hot. There's been a lot going on. Uh, my dog, our channel, our channel mascot, Phoebe, she's had some uh, medical problems that we've had to deal with this week. So I'm not going to get any videos in the garden this week. I got to cut the grass and weed some things and get some things prepared for you. So the next video I'm going to do, if I don't do one uh, sooner, the next video that I have planned is Wednesday the 21st is the solstice. And that's when we're going to be summer pruning our fruit trees for stunting their growth. Show you how to grow a micro orchard, a micro vineyard, and how to grow plants in a backyard uh, context like mine, a small garden. And out of that small garden, we get wonderful things like this. So, hey, thanks for joining me. I hope you have happy gardening and happy cooking. If you like our content, give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening, happy cooking. See you later.